Hey, what's going on guys? It is Lance OA. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I got a very special unboxing for you. It's not typically uh, along the lines of something I do on my channel, but um, as I kind of stated in my last video, I'm kind of uh, getting away from some of the precious metals collecting and stacking silver and gold, and I'm going to get into luxury watches. So, if you guys aren't familiar with this uh, logo, this is a Rolex timepiece. Uh, just took off the sleeve, and now we've got this uh, lovely ivory box. Check it out. And inside of the ivory box, we've got this fold-down flap with the very, very iconic green Rolex. Uh, text and then the crown it is metallic and it is slightly gold <laughs> I wouldn't say it is uh, very very golden color almost looks silver at the, this angle but I have for you below the two cent phone we have the green box yes this box is worth money itself, in it of itself. A little bit of a, oh, it's a little bit of sticky on there. And I've got gloves on, not because I'm going to be extremely anal with this timepiece, but I have the gloves on just to uh, resist a little bit of the smudging when I'm trying to take um, a kind of a quality close-up video of this. So, without further ado, I have the... Rolex reference 126710 BLNR. And uh, this is formerly referred to as the Bruiser. Um, and its nickname is also called Batman, but uh, with the Jubilee bracelet, as you can see here, they're now calling this one more of the Batgirl to distinguish it from the Oyster bracelet. The GMT Master 2 is uh, perfectly good for world travelers. Uh, I believe this was originally um, invented or devised for uh, flying for the airline industry with the whole Pan Am's flights. So you can track three different time zones, um, your home and another one, and then you've got uh, your bi-directional bezel so you can track a third time zone so check it out beautiful I've already got some uh, some love scratches on there micro scratches and actually there's a little bit of uh, AD sticker left that uh, they missed when they were peeling that off and there was also one here uh, but I've wanted it a couple times already, and that peel, that sticker likes to peel off, so that one's going soon. But check it out. You've got the Cerachrome bezel and the Platinum inlay on the numbers. You've got that, uh, that blue GMT hand for your second time zone. The Mercedes hand there for the hour, and then this thicker one for the minute. And you can see the seconds going around there with the uh, the little ping pong ball there. Not sure what the real reference name is. You can see in the uh, rehot there, which is uh, the inside of the in between the bezel and the dial. You've got uh, kind of a laser engraving all around, and then in the crystal sapphire crystal. There's uh, a micro etching of a crown located at, uh, at the six o'clock mark. It's very hard to photograph and definitely, definitely very hard to video, but you might be able to make it out there. And supposedly the, the etched in dots are at, uh, at different depths within the crystal. And then if you ever had this serviced and if you had a scratched crystal, if they ever replaced it, uh, it would come with uh, some sort of um, different etching or maybe no etching at all. 
to signify that it has been in fact serviced and it is a replacement dial. So let's take a look at the box a little bit closer. Um, you know, for what the boxes are, I, I would actually expect a little bit more refinement. Perhaps, uh, I think there's been previous boxes with some, maybe some wood involved. Um, but let's see what we have here. So the pillow that the uh, watch is attached to, it squishes down so it's able to accommodate when you resize it. And I had uh, two links removed, as you can see. And we've got the, um, like the skew tag. That's very nice looking. And it's got the serial number on it, which all matches and um, the model number. One, two, six, seven, one, O, oh, B, L, N, R. And you've got a little oyster there. It is oyster steel. Rolex has their own foundry. You guys all know this stuff. But let's check out the hang tag. You gotta have all the pieces. Um, this is a keeper for me. Uh, there's gonna be no reselling in this, this household. That's gonna be sacrilegious. And um, I would love to pass these along, uh, or this watch to one of my daughters, maybe my firstborn for my first watch. So checking out the hand tag a little bit closer. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit out of focus here. This is supposed to, supposed to mimic uh, kind of a wax seal that maybe they used to do with the watches uh, back in the 50s or even earlier beyond that. Um, got these uh, little light green and dark green cord. That's kind of a, a nice touch that nobody's really discussed um, to show how you know, it's just a set it apart from other manufacturers. Now with the box itself, you've got that, uh, that trap door, hidden, hidden window. And let's see what we have inside. We've got the Oyster Perpetual GMT Master Manual. And this is gonna go on uh, to show the various parts of your watch, describe how it works. Describe the time zones. And I'm definitely not gonna increase this thing, but I'm gonna go through it uh, once I get a good chance. Um, but I am familiar with how to wind the watch and how to set time. You would unscrew the crown on the watch, locate it on the right hand side till it pops out, and then you're in position one, and then you can proceed to. Um, wind it clockwise uh, and I think I've heard uh, let's see a minimum of 25 turns for partial winding so this has got a 70 hour if I'm not mistaken um, power reserve for the wind so you need to set it uh, approximately every three days a little bit a little bit shy of every three days and yeah, of course, I'm going to learn more about my my timepiece. But let's check out the... It almost looks like a wallet. I almost wish they would give you a wallet. That would be kind of cool. Um, kind of go with. So maybe Rolex can, uh, can take some fan requests. So this uh, card holder, which holds your warranty booklet. And this is worldwide service. So you can pop into any Rolex uh, authorized dealer and drop off your watch and it will get service. Um, and from um, what I know about these watches so far is they should require or have a service at least every five years, uh, excuse me, every 10 years. It does come with a five year um, limited warranty, I'm sure. Limited on that part. Um, here is uh, my actual five year warranty card see the model number I've uh, of course blacked out my serial number and it is dated with the date of purchase so the five-year clock starts there and it has my full name on there as well as the retailers um, I did get this uh, locally so I've only been to one uh, Rolex AD 
and I got on that list and um, they gave me a call in no time at all. They gave me a call in uh, about seven weeks. I didn't uh, count exactly the days, but seven weeks. So my next video will probably be a topic of how I think I got my Rolex watch in seven weeks because um, for this GMT Master II, I believe that weight is uh, kind of unheard of. Typically, a weight for something like this would be in the six months to a year range for the Batgirl. I've heard of the Pepsi, which is the blue and red bezel variant, B-L-R-O. I've heard that um, weight is upwards of a year and a half to two years. And at the same time I picked this up, they had said they'd sold the, the BLRO, the Pepsi, uh, just the day before. And that gentleman had been on the waiting list for two years. So I'm not sure how long his actual wait was, um, but you know, they, they always talk in approximation. So if they say two years, I, I'm inclined to believe them. Um, I'm not anyone special, so uh, maybe I did something right, or maybe they saw uh, maybe some future purchasing with me. Uh, you know, not being an AD or an employee of an AD, it's it's hard to really know where you stand. And everyone talks about not wanting to play the games, but I think if, uh, if something's worth having, then it's worth uh, chasing after. And actually, I, I quite enjoyed uh, the hunt. Well, it wasn't quite much of a hunt for me, but it, it was more of a maybe a courting, courting with my AD, you know, just showing them that I was kind of worthy uh, to uh, be sold this watch. And it seems a little bit silly that you might have to prove yourself, but understand what's going on with the gray market, how these resellers and flippers are coming into the market and um, just trying to profit and make a quick sale off uh, these things. So it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't do the brand any good and, and the hobby any good when these flippers come in and, and flip this and sell this for 3000 over retail and then it gets into the gray market and then and then the gray market up marks it up another two grand. So now you have a fifteen thousand dollar watch. Nobody wants to pay for it. It's overvalued for what it's you know, what goes into it. Not not, not knocking Rolex at all. But it just taints the whole market in general. You get this uh, shortage of watches and shortage of true enthusiasts that want to enjoy these timepieces uh, for what they are. And that's uh, a beautiful luxury timepiece that's going to stand the test of time. I mean, just look at this flawless crystal, the Cyclops, date window. I mean, these are all icons. Um, the case is just fantastic. It's just magnificent. Magnificent. The brushed steel, the polished sides. This Jubilee bracelet is just ridiculously comfortable. And the clasp, it's just so good. It's just so crisp. So, oh, yeah, that's like butter. And it snaps and it, oh, it's just so nice this one does come with a um, available micro adjust and you see there's uh, one two three positions here where um, with the right tool you can slide just a couple millimeters and give yourself some breathing room perfect for possibly in the summer when when it warms up a little bit your wrist may swell and that'll be a, a really nice feature to have um, once we get into the summer months. But I'm really enjoying the the timepiece. I've got it set to um, Manila time. My parents are in Manila right now. And so, let's see, they are behind us. So we're looking at, um... okay, I actually had the incorrect time. Um... <laughs> On my GMT hand so I have to um, I reset it so now it is 822 plus in Manila I can track a uh, another time zone so I got my local time which is 422 I got 822 and um, 
that is in the morning since it's p.m. right now so they're a day ahead of us and then if I wanted to I could track another time zone just by using uh, the bezel here and setting it to um, to their time midnight using this style um, very cool watch it's very fun to wear I uh, enjoy it a lot um, kind of uh, reminds me to stop and smell the roses you can you can always make more money but you actually can't get time back so this will remind me to cherish the time uh, one thing to note is um, the AD offered me engraving and I'm not sure if I want to engrave it quite yet. Um, I know personalization would make it uh, even more mine and maybe uh, kind of show my family history or commemorate uh, an anniversary or a date, um, but just haven't decided what to do on that front. Um, I will show you a portion, just a small portion of my receipt is here sorry for the focus Put the watch down as you can see 9700 was uh, MSRP with California tax we're up to ten thousand four hundred fifty one dollars and seventy five cents uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the call in 2019. I believe the base price was 92.5, so 9,250 back in 2019. So hopefully, we don't have another price increase in 2021, uh, making it even harder to save up for these watches. Um, I was hoping to get a nice green bag to walk out of uh, the store with. Well, actually, I wasn't going to walk out of the store with it, but um, I got this bag instead, which is the jeweler's um, bag. They are an AD, so I got that bag. Um, and then I brought my own bag with me, my work bag, uh, which I can put my tablet in and work papers in. But I bought, brought that bag so I can walk in and out of the AD without attracting a lot of attention. I mean, you walk out with a little bag and immediately they, they know you've made a purchase of something um, substantial, probably. So, you know, jewelry, precious metals are typically um, quite expensive. So um, you don't want to get uh, accosted walking out the door of uh, your AD. So definitely if you can, um, you know, uh, disguise it in some way, shape or form or maybe have a buddy walk with you as well. They can be a lookout or, um, you know, just back you up if uh, if something were to happen. But um, let me know what you guys think of my purchase. This is my first foray into the hobby of luxury timepieces. And I was, you know, just very fortunate and very blessed to be able to uh, take on um, the iconic brand. Um, and unfortunately, this is uh, kind of an addictive hobby. You kind of want to get every uh, shape and flavor uh, to fit your occasions, the, the way you dress, what you do for work. Uh, and so I'm thinking of a couple watches I have in my mind. Uh, I'm not sure how hard or how easy they are to get. And, you know, since we're early into 2020, uh, my Budget has just been smashed now since I've purchased this watch. So I'm thinking perhaps a no date Submariner. Um, but actually, I, I kind of really like the date function because I, I almost forgot my sister's birthday. And luckily, that eight was peeking out in the window when I purchased this. The same day I purchased this was her birthday. So happy birthday to my sister. She's my younger sister, uh, three years younger. Um, and she just, uh, yeah, she just turned, what, 39, she just turned. And she is actually a Rolex owner herself. Uh, she beat me to the punch. Actually wasn't um, that fond of uh, the hobby. And, well, I knew I always wanted one. Um, but I never really even looked at the brand. I just knew I wanted a Rolex timepiece. 
to have on my wrist. Um, and once I started looking, this is the one I selected uh, to be my first watch. So I'm, I feel very fortunate I was able to get uh, the one I chose um, to be my first. So what I'm thinking of now for my second time piece is perhaps um, a Submariner no date or even a Submariner date kind of leading towards the date because I really like the date. But then, uh, you know, the, the no date is just so clean. And then I'm also looking at the, um, the Polar Explorer 2. And that white dial is just so, it's just got such great contrast. It also has the GMT function and um, just the stainless bezel. So it's kind of a no frills, maybe a little bit more versatile with um, being able to dress down. So that is my unboxing video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed um, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Hope you guys will subscribe. I do have some more videos in store. Uh, please click that thumbs up button as well. It helps the channel. So my next video I will probably do right now. And it's how I got my 126710 BLMR Batgirl in seven weeks. And I was also thinking of making like a Basil World predictions video, but I'm actually not that talented and I can't do any Photoshop. So we'll see if I can get to that video. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.